All right, Gary, what are we playing this week? Well, uh, you're going to have to come a little closer uh, to me through this uh, this hallway here. Um, I can't quite hear you from where you're at. Oh, okay. Well, I'll... Uh, well, watch out for that panel. Wait. That panel jumps out at you. Well, up above or below? Uh, kind of both. <sighs> okay. Well, also, I'll deftly step... Ar- All right, here oh, we go. Spikes. Spikes. I don't even see any spikes here. Are they going to come up like Indiana yep, Jones they're, style? They're there. <laughs> that kind of got me. There's a little, yeah. There's a little bit of blood there. Ow. Yeah. Well, I have band aids over here. Okay. I, I'm, I think I see and what you're doing. first aid. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just. That, can it that, suck it, my get in around this around these spikes? Okay. Check check your back pocket. Something reached out of the wall and stuck it in there. And pulling pulling it out, looking yep. at it in front of my face. The flash drive. Huh. And if you put that into a PC, the PC uh, spikes come out of the PC and cut open your wrist. And <laughs> why would you do that arm. to me? Huh? Because. Is it just any PC? Huh? Any PC? Yeah. That, that, it's, it's your <laughs> Mac immunity. That, that, that does. That finally served you well. That, that doesn't, that doesn't seem to be a, uh, that doesn't seem to be like a, like a software thing or something you could do with software. Don't run it on wine. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Pardo. Um, <laughs> it's I want to be the guy. I'm the ghost of Jimmy Pardo. <laughs> okay. And that's a, that's a consistent commie bang bang goof. I don't, oh, we could, it? we could get a lot of mileage on that, but I don't want to copy it. <sighs> okay. Um, I yeah. just I accidentally did a Jimmy Pardo impersonation and I, I had to. I, I think the fact okay. that I don't listen to that show is hurting me in in laughing at things that I shouldn't encourage. Yeah, you're you're missing it because the the Jimmy Pardo stuff is pretty good. I'm sure. Nassim Padron. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary can, can you call off the traps and also restate what game we're talking about this oh, time? Oh, um, I want to be the guy. Fuck! The movie. The I, game. I I I am I I am pale myself on the spikes now. We only have oh, okay. a, we only have That's half okay. hour before I bleed out. Let's do this. I have a trick first aid kit here. I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What's inside? Uh, more spikes. Snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gary Butterfield. I'm Cole Ross. And this is Abject Suffering, where we play the games that one specific guy, yeah. Mark, tell us to play. Yes. <laughs> so um, one very specific, very generous person who was lucky enough to win our once a month raffle um, for Patreon here. And uh, he was very apologetic, uh, this Mark fellow, in uh, recommending this because uh, this, is, this is neither retro nor specifically bad. This well, we is... don't. Yeah, we this this show is never meant to be a retro game. That's for sure. right. Those are just the easiest things to emulate. Right. And yeah. you know we we have a history of doing games that are secretly kind of good. This is just a, a a very strong emphasis on the suffering side of it. Yeah, it is mean spirited, but it's very interesting. Oh my like, gosh! Like I, I don't hate. I want to be the guy. No, neither do I. In fact, yeah. in fact, I would say that. The act of playing I want to be the guy is something I am pr- pretty much have never been interested in doing uh, ever since I kind of figured out the trick of the first screen. I was like, oh, this, that, that, that's what this is going to be then? Okay. Um, but watching a run of I want to be the guy, it's it's one of the best expressions of comedy in a video game, I think. Well, it, it does that. And then it's also, it can be a really amazing expression of skill too. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. this is a really popular speed run game. Um, on awesome games on quick and uh and then other kind of variants of it like i want to be the bashi which is a, another one and it's very fun to watch people just know this mm-hmm. inscrutable thing perfectly yeah and just kill it yeah so what's the uh, so you're a repository of this knowledge what's the speed run record for this game I can't remember. It's like it's less than an hour. Okay. Um. It's it's probably forty minutes or something like that. The, but the, the video the video me. that I've watched that seems to be the canonical one because it has like two million views, which is crazy. Um. It's uh. It's in five parts. Um. And it's uh. It's about fifty minutes. Yeah. I think I think that's about what what it is. Yeah. Because even the speed runs, you, you know, there's still deaths. <laughs> um. So people who don't know what this is, um, like one dude, uh, named Kayan, uh, made this game. And he made it, it was inspired by a Japanese game called um, Awada. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever seen Awada? Have you looked that up at all? Yes. 
it's kind of neat looking. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's all ASCII. Yeah. Like the art style of Awada is really interesting. Mm -hmm. You play kind of an emoji. Um, but the, uh, which is just like a hard subversive platformer game. And he was just like, I could do this harder and better <laughs> and kind of started like a whole thing. Yeah. Like, and like the idea behind this is just that it's super hard. It's really iterative. Like you do trial and error, you know, to get through it and it just subverts things. So like when you've seen those ROM hacks of Mario, where like you try to jump over a pit and you hit a coin block and it knocks you into a pit, like <laughs> that's what, the, that's what this is. Again, as much as I hate be, like being like victim to that, it's still mm -hmm. funny to see because it, it, it indicates a level of care. Yeah, <laughs> like specifically crafting something to to like to, to, to just fuck you, except for this one particular non-intuitive way to get around it. Well, the, he even talks about it um, like he has a fact on his Web page mm -hmm. where he talks about somebody being like, oh, you just make this hard as a substitute for good level design. And he says, like, this isn't... <laughs> have you seen it? Yeah. Like people are saying like, oh, that, you know, <laughs> people don't say this very much, but sometimes people do say it. But here's why that's wrong. Like, uh -huh. you know, and it is true. Like, it's not bad level design. No, it's that's it's not probably over designed is the thing. Yeah, and, it's and that's really, exactly what it does. Really crafted. Like, it's uh -huh. crafted to like if you consider like level design to be um, like an art or like painting. Yeah. Like, well, you don't say that a painting of an apple is a bad painting of a gun. <laughs> you know, like it is just yeah. a, or, or vice versa, I guess, would be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Like you say, you know, it is it is they're going for an effect and it's how well you achieved an effect. Yeah. But in this case, both of them will kill you. Yes. And, yeah, it's, it's You know, there's so much cyanide in apple seeds. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like it, it, taking that one step further if you consider level design to be like the imposition of your will and intentionality to create a space or an yeah. like like every single pixel of this is thought out and there are specific lines that he's asking you to take like watching the speed run i'm like i'm not sure what i'm more impressed with somebody being able to get through this or the person who has basically <laughs> managed to create all these safe and unsafe spaces with like really just timing. Yeah. Yeah. And it ends up looking like any given screen, like almost any given screen of this game looks like at first glance, like you could never do it. <laughs> and that's where it ends up being fun is like, you know, then you eventually you do it, you get unlimited tries and you make it mm -hmm. and you get to the next screen and, and die on that and stuff. And that's how it's how, where the fun comes from, which like is not for me, but is something I respect. Yeah, And it reminds me, again, like I, I brought this example up a thousand times, but like getting to the rafters in Anne Orlando and Dark Souls <laughs> and being like, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, this is unsure and I can't fight enemies on this kind of footing. And then like you just do it and then you're like, OK, now I know I can do it. Yeah, um, it's like that. And then there are also like there, there's, there's whole like degrees of this kind of crazy, super hard platformer. Mm -hmm. And there are there are iterations of this i really like yeah like uh super meat boy is great super meat boy specifically at least in the console version has i want to be the guy levels in it yeah which are and fun. you can those play are, as the guy yeah those, i mean like those are great i really enjoy those because like they're not as hard as this they're just really meant to be dull jump um mm -hmm. kind of kind of sections which is which is neat <laughs> yeah have you ever played um one of my favorite uh psp exclusive games is a game called Prinny. can i really be the hero uh no but that's the one where you have like a thousand and one lives yeah, you have a thousand lives. You you play as the little penguin guys from um, <laughs> the, the, from Dis Disgaea. Yeah, the dudes. Yeah, the, yeah, the little dudes, and it's it's really funny and charming. Mm -hmm. um, you have a thousand lives, and it's just a really hard platformer, and uh, you like end up needing them. Like I, I never <laughs> beat it. I got you know stuck at a point, but I was like, oh, I've I've played four hundred and fifty lives of this. <laughs> um, and you also eventually you get a superpower that lets you throw extra lives at enemies <laughs> and use your use your one ups as a projectile, which I really love. That sounds delightful. Um, but it's, and it, that one is really, really thoughtfully designed, too. And mm -hmm. it's in the same way that Ghosts and Goblins is like you just can't control your jump. Yeah. Once you're in the air. So you just have to be very and you have a double jump and you just have to be very precise with it. Yeah. And like I can get into that. Like that's mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. down with uh, with VVVVV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that feels it's not as extreme, but it's, you know, there are there, sections of that that have the same. Oh, I can't do that kind of appeal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in in general, like the game, like I, th I have a lot of respect for it and I think it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so like the, aesthetically, I, I, you know, I can take it or leave it, honestly. Like yeah. it's pretty cool how it takes all of these different, uh, uh, you know, assets and songs and stuff and kind of like mixes in the different kind of like play to it to make just like, you know, any given level of this doesn't really look or feel like it's part of the same game aside from a couple of recurring things like the spikes and the apples or sorry, the mm -hmm. delicious fruit. 
Yeah. The, um, the, on the fact, there's a thing where someone's like, apples don't fall up. And his answer is they're actually more like cherries. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there yeah. we go. Yeah. There you have it. Um, but um, but yeah, so it, it incorporates all these things up to the point where Bowser comes down and fights you in his Koopa Clown car. And then it's Wart. And then it's Dr. Wily. It's just a, a straight cavalcade. And so this very much is in the like, it, it feels like the aesthetic is a Sprite comic in video yeah. game form. That's pretty accurate. Um, like, I really like how uh, the fact that it has all those things speaks to a non-commercialness to mm-hmm. its release. Like, it's a free game, and you can never <laughs> it port this to, to an... Yeah. yeah, it has to be. You know, exactly. Like, it's just made for love. Like, and that's really charming, too. Mm-hmm. Like, an expression of one guy made for love. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of c- curious if this guy has gone on to do anything, because... I could see this being like a senior thesis or something like that. Yeah, that like really drew hired attention by, by somebody like uh, like oh, this guy ended up being the guy who made N plus or worked on N plus, you know, mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Um, no, he uh, they did a sequel to this, hmm. but but that's that's it. That's a shame. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's super a shame because he's he's obviously got some chops. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> The um, it's really uh, kind of fortuitous to do this episode too, like right on the verge of uh, Mario Maker coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's so, it's a little it's a little bit after that as the time people yeah. are hearing this. But when we're, we're recording, recording it, it a couple yeah. days before Mario Maker. Yeah, and so we're seeing a bunch of stuff like that, and I'm sure I will have experienced a lot of it because oh, Gary, I'm going to disappear down a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. you know i think that i think that what's going to happen so mario maker has kind of that, that classic uh level editor uh safety put in place where you have to beat a level yourself before you yeah. uh, before you can publish it which there are any number of ways to get around that but like i think it's really going to kind of show people how hard that is to do like you've already seen a bunch of a bunch of levels that are as difficult as possible right yeah and yeah It'll be funny to see how the like like the the good versions of that bubble up, and I wonder if like the subtleties are really going to be appreciated. When I that happens, to, I would really like to have um, like more people not do like Kaizo style levels. Yeah, for Mario Maker, like I would love like a compilation of like these are just the best like just really fun levels, mm-hmm. and like Nintendo's releasing it with those. Mm-hmm. Like, God, do I want to play Mario Maker? <laughs> um, like, I'm I'm really excited for it. Um, but like it is it is the kind of thing where like I guess to, to your point is like this has been explored so much and people are gonna see how hard it is, but I also kind of want people to see that like there's other things you can do mm-hmm. with that kind of tool than just make I wanna be the guy. Yeah. Cause there's already I wanna be the guy. <laughs> That's already there. And there's 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 plenty of that stuff in the Mario space as well. Yeah. And if they do do it, I want them to use the combinations of stuff that, that like that are possible in on Mario that weren't possible in the previous ones to really make it novel right yeah me too yeah that'd be the, the, the that'd be the thing um how far did you get um like uh third like so it, it starts off with a trick where like you're supposed to go up rather than down <laughs> like, you can double jump out of the first room which took me a little while to figure out me too um because i thought i had played this before but i'd actually played the sequel oh uh, wow the i want to save the kids mm-hmm. whatever that's the one i played um like fourth screen like something with fun tons of spikes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I didn't get past the spikes in the clouds. Um, yeah. 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 Like a so so like the first real screen of the game has the has the cherries or delicious fruit or whatever that fall from the tree and then the ones that fall upwards. Yeah. And then if you if you look at a like I watched a full playthrough of this in lieu of actually playing it because I knew I would need to be able to talk about something. <laughs> Yeah. Um but uh but later on they like they they abandon all pretense of gravity or like oh these just fall up and they just start firing from the trees like they're turrets. Yeah. <laughs> like, very turrets. like firing directly at you. Yeah. Pretty pretty good. Mhm. Yeah. Pretty good. Um they have a full on like there's voice acting in this. Like you get to the throne room from Symphony of the Night and they like they do the what is a man but a pile of secrets kind of thing. And you have a little guy is like, no, I want to be the guy. Yeah. 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 It's cute. Yeah. It's super cute. I like it. Um, I guess he makes money through donations. Like he mm. never asked for money, but he and he probably did okay with that. Like enough people like this to where like, mm-hmm. you know, 
Um, <laughs> so. looking at the uh, looking at the name of the tool that this uh, that this was made in uh, uh, multimedia fusion too. There's one uh, hazard really late in the game where it spawns a, a dialogue box as though there's mm-hmm. like oh some kind of huge error in multimedia fusion too, but it's styled as though it was Windows XP, which was the style at the time. You see, and it turns out that that's a hazard <laughs> that will fall on you. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah, he's made other games like um I lo- just looked him up on Twitter and stuff. He made a game called Brave Earth the Prologue. Hmm. Um and he likes Dark Souls. <laughs> he's talking about Dark Souls on his Twitter. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes tons of sense. <laughs> it's so funny to me though that people who can see this and see Dark Souls and think like we don't need to have like our mm-hmm. difficulty is not the most important part of Dark Souls conversation, but like people some people lack a level of granularity where they see something like this and they see something about dark souls and see no difference between them. Yeah. You're like, I keep dying. It has to be the same thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's, it's not like the one thing about something like, I want to be the guy is that like, it's not, uh, it's not like it it is unfair. Like you're going to die Mm -hmm. and stuff. It's about learning the thing and then mastering how to avoid it. Right. It's not about like paying attention to your environment to, to avoid traps in the first place. You know, yeah, yeah, I, 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 specifically avoid traps in the first place, you know, uh, like trying to notice the ones that are always going to get you because it, it, it does require trial and error because stuff will just come out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is traps. Yeah. Whereas the first time you get hit by a by by a flying arrow and, and Dark Souls, you're probably going to notice the pressure pads and know to like know, know to roll. So totally. both, both of them are like trying to teach you something. They're just teaching you different things. One is rote memorization, where, whereas the other one is trying to like more broadly make you aware. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like. You know, and that's not justification. That isn't us saying like, oh, well, you're fans of Dark Souls. So obviously anything that's difficult, you're going to want to defend. Like, no, there are just like a whole bunch of degrees of this. And just because something is trying to teach you something or like would put you off by trial and error, that's it's not it's not always going to be the same thing. Yep. 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 It, it's just yeah it's just it's just whether you're doing doing bullshit yeah at the same time i think i was defensive by at least four degrees there yeah, more than more than need be <laughs> yeah. probably by at least two yeah. have you ever met anyone named guy uh no me either i have not i don't even know what the guy is so i know that the the bo- like the boss that you fight at the end is the guy who is your dad who killed your grandfather who was also the guy is it just yeah. the title that you're vying for I think so, but then in a meta sense, like it's just like the guy who does all the cool shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I want to be that guy. Like I want to be the guy. Yeah. You know who like who does all the awesome platforming and yeah. all that stuff. You want to meet that dad. You want to be that guy. Yeah, exactly. I, like the greatest dad you've ever seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> put on some dream cream. Yeah. Yeah. So and John Galt. I've never met a person named Guy. Um, there, there, there are any number of clients I've had who probably one of them could have been named Guy, but I don't remember that. Have you? No. Okay. Follow up question: Can you think of a more masculine name than Guy Pierce? <sighs> that's pretty masculine. Like that's a, that's a very masculine name. Yeah. No, that's pretty. That's pretty good. That's. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna say that the only person who can probably like contend with that is Rip Torn. Rip Torn is pretty good, but it's less phallic. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose it's more it's more like visceral, though. I think yeah. the Riptorn implies more 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 fury, whereas Guy Pierce feels feels very focused. It's very yeah, it's very dick like. It'd be like <laughs> a lady being named like Uva Aperture. <laughs> like that'd be the most Yannick like name you could have. Uva Aperture. Like <laughs> oh man, <laughs> is that the name of like a tertiary character in an Emmanuel movie? It might as well be like a Metal Gear <laughs> Uva Aperture. I'm yeah. sure that's one of the ones you can roll up in Metal Gear yeah. Five. Yeah, Aperture, uh, Aperture Octopus. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just fuck beak. <laughs> um, no, 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 like as a sentence, not as a <laughs> okay, cool, a person. Like you just fuck beak. It's not. <laughs> so. I'm sorry, just like uh, the people who refer to uh, uh, receiving oral sex as getting dome. That's I've like, never heard that before. Yeah, I've, I've heard that ooh. before. <laughs> Yeah. I don't care for that. No, I don't care for that one bit. But yeah, no. Getting dome. Getting dome. It's so close to getting Doma, which sounds delightful because I'm still hungry from before. <laughs> You're still hungry for my description of Taco Mac? Yeah. Oh, we could go, Gary. Come on. Yeah, I would still, I would still like some Doma. <laughs> what is Doma? I don't understand what Doma it's, is. It's, it's a, I think it's a Greek or a Greek food. Um, 
Well, it's the Defense of Marriage Act, of course. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was that. I thought it was a um, like a, a Mediterranean food thing, but mm. I might be uh, thinking of a different. No, I think I, like I think you're off. thinking of that uh, that fuzzy character who kills kittens when you masturbate. Oh yeah, Domacon. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Hmm. The the guy thing I think is just this. You know, one of the things I like about this is is that it's such it's one guy's like affection, and it's his affection for this like action movie mm-hmm. thing. Um, when uh, Bob and Jorah were visiting, I went and saw Face Off. <laughs> have, have we talked about that something? Have you seen that movie? Oh, I've seen that movie. Yeah. Okay, I had seen it once when I was very young, and I had a friend who took it seriously. Like the first time I saw it, he was just like, "You got to see Face Off. It's fucking badass. It's John Woo." And I was like, "All right." And I watched it. And I didn't like it. <laughs> and then watch it as an adult, and it I realized like it's my favorite movie of all time. Like it's it's so I mean it's not quite that, but it's it's so good. <laughs> like it is like I think there's so much room for that kind of like affectionate take on uh, uh, this kind of action, like this kind of machismo mm-hmm. thing. And if you do it right, it can create like amazing things that are not straight. Like it's not Fury Road, <laughs> you know, but it, it it's like it just. I don't know. Like, I really like a, a form of media like that. Definitely. Yeah. I, th- I think that what makes Face Off, and, and I feel like we may maybe talked about this a little bit in the in the last Hero episode. I, 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 for- mm-hmm. I forget. But what makes Face Off for me is the casting. Yeah. Right. So, but going into it, I thought, like, I was like, okay, Nick Cage, you know, he's a legend for being a real wacko. Uh huh. But I wasn't expecting John Travolta to bring it as much as he did. Like Travolta right. does a great job in that movie as well. Like everybody is just on point. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, so Nick Cage, he doesn't have, he's never had like a peak. He just has like little miniature, miniature rises. He's got the, uh, you know, he has his leaving Las Vegas's and then he's mm-hmm. got his family man's right. Yeah. You know, so he's just like a constant ebb and flow, although it's been mostly ebb since, since the rock, I think. Well, is it is it Ebb or is it like just he's operating and he's playing a different game than the rest of us and like it might uh, there's there's an episode of Community about this where they're trying to figure out they're trying to figure out it's like, it's like a class somebody somebody's presenting a class about whether or not Nicolas Cage is good hmm. and it drives one of the characters crazy because every actor needs to be either bad or good and the moral is. Not not everything can it like is either bad or good. Sometimes people just do crazy stuff for no reason. Yeah, and and that and and that explains Nicolas Cage. And that has been Cole's synopsis of a show that he watched recently. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just it doesn't matter. Like he's good. It depends on the aim, right? It actually kind of comes back to that level design discussion because like if his aim is to be entertaining, uh huh, like he does it as well as anyone. It's hard to look away. Yeah, he he is he is a like such a scene stealer. Mm-hmm. Like he is he is arresting in in every possible sense. But it, it what it does is it transforms the movie around him into a certain kind of movie. Right. You know, like I think it's legitimately good. Like I think Face Off is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Like it is it is not it's not just him. Like it it is supposed to be it's supposed to be self aware. Like it is supposed to be a little goofy. Yeah. You know, um, and. But you could, you can't take it, even if you wanted to, even if that was not true. And John Woo was like, "No, this is my epic meditation on like identity." <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, it it is. If that was the case, it would still be good <laughs> in this way he didn't intend. How can how can you not be sure that you weren't face off in the middle of the night and you're living somebody else's life? Man, I didn't Man. think about that. Is yeah, it, I, wait, I guess... wait a minute? Is is face off just basically another body body swap movie? Like is 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 is, is, oh, like is vice that, versa? Yeah, is, is that is that hardcore action freaky Friday? Um, sure. I mean, everyone knows about it. Like, it's not a gypsy curse. It is a weird <laughs> other thing. But yeah, um, yeah, more or less. Wait, uh, okay. So I forget. It's been several years since I've seen this movie. Do they explain why their voices don't change? Uh, yes. Okay. They put in um like electronics into their throats. <laughs> of course so, they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's a really great scene with um, uh, uh, Nicolas Cage talking with John Travolta's voice and trying to do, you know, slowly try to do a John Travolta impression until they actually <laughs> like switch into Nick Cage or vice versa. Um, That's my favorite thing about those movies is when Ryan Reynolds tries to be Jason Bateman. Oh yeah, and vice yeah. versa. Have you ever seen? Um, you ever seen? Uh, now you see it. No. 
If it was a uh, magician heist movie. <laughs> like, I, oh, wait, like, I think I've heard about this. Didn't this come out at the same time as another magician heist movie? Oh, I don't know about that. I think it did. You're thinking, actually. You're thinking of the illusionist. No, I, the I'm, I'm totally not. There was another. There was another magician heist movie that came out right around the time of, as now you see it. Huh. Um. Yeah. No, I don't know about that one. Mm-hmm. Um. But there's a guy in, in now you see it. Like now you see it. I think like you should watch that movie. Like it's good. Wait, is it this is, the, is... a 2005 Disney original movie? No, <laughs> no, I didn't know such a thing existed. Do I have the name of it wrong? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I, I totally could. I don't know. 20, 2013. Okay. Now, now you see me. Now you see me is the name of it. <laughs> okay. God, that, that, that does, that name doesn't seem right to me, but it is true. Yeah. Nah. Unless I got face off, like in the middle of that Google search, but like <laughs> the, and now I, I'm seeing through another eyes, but like it is, it's like a Jesse Eisenberg movie. Okay. Um, but it's really entertaining huh. and like, it's essentially people doing stage magic, which is something that I already appreciate. And we've talked about quite a bit. Um, but using it essentially like as kind of like uh, to, to impersonate people and get away with shit. So there's yeah. a part where like a guy, um, like I think it's like Casey Affleck, um, impersonates a guy who is going to like beat him up <laughs> until eventually he like, can steal his radio and talk in his voice. Okay. Like he just like, but he watch it. Like he's under pressure and he's like getting this person's mannerisms right. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. Like, huh. it's totally a good movie. Like, it's a good movie. You know what movie I always forget Casey Affleck was in? Gone Ocean's Girl? Eleven. Oh, sure. Yeah, I, like he was one of the least memorable parts of that movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're sharing the stage with Crazy Eyes, Bernie Mac. Yeah, yeah. And, and any number of, like, you know, just actors having fun hanging out with each other. <laughs> yeah. The movie. Uh, Do you like attractive people? <laughs> well, they like well, each other. Boy, have we... Oh, man. Ocean's Eleven, when the stars come down from the sky to shine on Earth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like the Academy Awards for 90 minutes. Yep. <laughs> well, <laughs> Never won an Academy Award. This has a really, uh, Now You See Me has a really ominous Wikipedia page because it says, you know, one plot, two cast, three production, three one filming, three one one on set incident. <laughs> so, um, and just somebody almost drowned. Oh, And then okay. somebody was Isla Fisher, uh, but she survived. Huh. Good, Good for, for her. her. Yeah. Yeah. She's still alive. Why? Why do we both say good for her? Because uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that the voice of Beans and Rengo is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> when she, huh. she almost got Rengoed. <laughs> what's the, the, the? This is obviously a question that I'm asking because I have an answer for it. But what's the Nicolas Cage movie you like but you know you shouldn't? Hmm. Mm. I mean, like, it just nobody should tell you what you should like, but just kind of like you, you know, it's not great, but you still hold affection for it. It's like I can't answer it because of the the thing we talked about before. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they're all kind of good. <laughs> I think I should like all of them. Like, do you, okay. what? What is your answer? The Weatherman. Okay. Yeah, the Weatherman. I haven't. I, I I've seen that one, but it's been a very long time. Like, yeah. I don't think so, about it. so the Weatherman. Like I watched it right around the same time that I watched like uh oh gosh not not I heard Huckabees what's the one with the with the little girl in the beauty pageant Little Miss oh, Sunshine oh yeah yeah it was it was around like the, those came out at around the same time and I was like in late high school enough to where anything that looked like an independent movie I got confused with the other thing mm-hmm. and so that's a trap that let's I call let's let's call it the Garden State trap yeah okay. <laughs> where something you can confuse something that is legitimately good, you know, such as the Alan Arkin tour de force, little miss sunshine um, mm. with something that is mediocre, which is the weatherman, which is uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick cage plays a weatherman who is not a, uh, a meteorologist who is trying to win the, uh, the, the, the approval of his dying father who is played by my cocaine. And mm-hmm. uh, also uh, when the, uh, when the affection of his son, and yeah, there's it's a, like there's that, a that weird mumblecore kind of except yeah, it doesn't Anderson. it doesn't have those Duplass full of folks oh, in yeah, it. Yeah. Duplassisms, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's definitely Nick, an an independent movie filtered through Nicolas Cage. You know what I I, I have an answer for you because I forgot about it. <laughs> uh, my answer is Lord of War. Oh shit, I was just thinking about Lord of War because of the Hall- uh, hallelujah scene. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I kind of liked Lord of the War. Yeah, and that that's pretty restrained Nicolas Cage. Mm-hmm. 
in Lord of War. Definitely. Although Nicolas Cage, when he's set loose in something like Matchstick Men, that Matchstick oh, Men sure. is fucking great. I love Matchstick Men. Yeah. Yeah. Super good. Like, I just want to watch a bunch of Nicolas Cage movies now. Hmm. Like, this is making me want to, like, start a Nick Cage podcast. I'm sure there is one. <laughs> yeah. That's, but uh, like, it's, it's, it's called the Flop House. But... Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's called Every Bad Movie Podcast, more or less. Like, Pretty much. It is. That is everywhere. Oh, I forgot that yeah. Matchstick Men was directed by Ridley Scott. <laughs> that, that's odd <laughs> but no Nicolas Cage he's got obsessive to, uh, compulsive disorder and it has Sam Rockwell one of my favorite actors yeah huh and, and Nick Cage is such a like it's not a good movie but Nick Cage was really good in Kick-Ass you know I've like never a, seen Kick-Ass oh well, like I mean, it's not really wa- worth watching but he plays the, like a character who is essentially like a in the comics he's just like a like a Batman analog uh-huh. but Nick Cage makes the amazing choice to play him like uh, Adam West Batman <laughs> And it's really good. That's, like he's like this like crazy vigilante. That's and he's just really like, appropriate. Yes, daughter of mine. Like he's he's very funny in it. Like huh. it's really good. God, he's great. <laughs> there we go. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Adaptation. That's wonderful. <laughs> what the hell? Like like adaptation has so much going for it beside Nicolas Cage. Like yeah, but he's, that, he's that's really one, good. that's one of the things. That's one of the few movies that actually doesn't revolve around him. I don't think. No, it doesn't. Like he actually disappears into the role for like once in his life. <laughs> so, huh. we'll see if he does during uh, the Crudes too as the voice of Grug. <sighs> so, <laughs> God, the the Crudes. I've actually watched the Crudes, Gary. Oh, you've seen the Crudes? I've seen the Crudes. My uh, my stepdad. The most recent television that they acquired is a three D television. <laughs> it came with the Crudes on it. <laughs> no, it didn't come with the it's Crudes. It's cursed on. and it only plays the Crudes. <laughs> yeah. If you bought it from a guy who sells Mogwais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't hold on to it and like hold a hand up into the sky to catch the right reception to place the crudes. Man, there's like there's like a, a button that you have to press. That you can't put anything on. Like it's at an angle or something. Uh-huh. Like a button on the side at a 45 degree angle that you have to press or it plays the crudes. <laughs> like we gotta start like a cursed, like cursed appliance store. Yeah. Like that. Well no, it'd just be uh yeah, definitely. Huh. I like that. I, I just, uh, this is something is deeply discounted. Like we, we have to do this at a loss because you have to get the parts, right? Yeah. You have to buy, you have to buy a television and make it worse. Yeah. Um, make, yeah. make it worse in one theater. specific way and then yeah. sell it because you can't make it better, right? Like a television is just going to be a television, mm-hmm. you know, but so you have to, you have to sell it to where it seems like a steal except. Yeah. The name of our business will be two crudes dudes. <laughs> <laughs> crudes with attitude. Yeah, Crudes with Attitude is also good. <laughs> there we go. Um, Red Crudes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've told you. So, 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 no, the reason I've watched the Crudes is because we got the 3D television. And um, uh, that is one of the few, like, like Hollywood movies you can recognize that is available in 3D streaming on Netflix. Like, go on to Netflix and look at their 3D um, stuff. And it's a whole bunch of, like, IMAX um, like things you would see at a at a like a science museum center about dinosaurs and stuff like that, but no, we didn't want to watch that. And it's also a bunch of like basically like like food fight level. Here's demo animation, oh, sure. but yeah. here's here's the crudes, and you know let's watch this because we have four four pairs of glasses, and I'm like I want to watch a 3D television. <laughs> And yeah. so it's there. I've, and then you got cursed with the crudes. Yeah. I, I can swear I've told the story and you can tell me if I'm repeating myself. Have I told you about uh, the death guru? Um, tell me uh, not based on the name of it. Okay. The, 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 the time when my stepdad's DVD burner messed up and intercut scenes of the love guru with scenes from death wish by Charles Bronson. <laughs> I don't think you have. That's really great. That's pretty... I didn't even know that it was an error that could happen. <laughs> Neither did like, I. That sounds, it's, I'm not saying I don't doubt you. It sounds fake. <laughs> So, (laughs) again, my family has questionable taste in movies and also don't like paying for movies, or at least didn't at the time. Um, Can you say it's covering his ass? Well, no, but so here's the here's the love guru. No, we weren't trying to watch Death Wish. If we were sitting down trying to watch Death Wish, that would have been great. 
right? Sure. Like, let's, let's sit down. It's a, it's a it's a badass movie. It's like a crazy exploitation. And Charles Bronson is one of the least photogenic people on the entire world. <laughs> he's very hard to look at. <laughs> yeah, he's got that mustache. It's so good. But it's like you know, here's here's Mike Myers being a racist caricature in front of Jessica Alba and uh, Justin Timberlake, and he's like saying, "You must unlock the secret within," and then just smash cut to Charles Bronson just wailing on a dude in an airport bathroom. That's great. And then it cuts you back. still have that DVD? Nope. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. I asked if I could keep it, and they threw it away. <laughs> Dang, that's very special. <laughs> but it was done at re- like a really good time. And all I can think is some wires got crossed inside the computer that, uh, as he was trying to like cue those up, they decided to like write one sector as one movie, write another sector as another, and it just happened to sync up. <laughs> what if it was intentional? What if he was trying to teach you guys a lesson? <laughs> Like, no, it was him. This is all him. You know, his uh his 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 uh um mantra at the time was clear as a bell. I was as clear as a bell, right? Like I, I got this and I downloaded it, but it's clear as a bell, even though it's a cam, even though it's yeah. a tarot, it's like, it's just like oh, this is this is horrible. Why would you even watch this? And you know, like you do you want a copy of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, is that released on DVD yet? No. No, but okay, yeah, but it's cl- but it's but it's clear as a bell. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, one of the reviews of the Love Guru says, uh, "If shit got the Love Guru Guru on it, shit would wipe it off." <laughs> like, that's pretty. That's pretty that's, special. That's like some shit sandwich level reviewing. Yeah, that's the yeah. Huh. But yeah, so we we've learned a lot today. Yes, we have. Um, we've learned that I want to be the guy um, is best experienced by watching somebody else play it. Yep. That there's a lot to respect there. Let's do a mashup. That's I want to be the Guru Pitka. <laughs> And then it can be, get, get your 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 stepdad's haunted DVD burner <laughs> to create huh. that mashup. Yeah, no, that'd be pretty good. Man, huh. I, I can't even look at the cover of the Love Guru. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> his his makeup is so upsetting, and it's hard to tell if that's just aging Mike Myers or if that so, is somebody owns this as a poster. <laughs> like, this is a movie poster, and somebody took one after they gave it away free at the end of like the movie. Yeah. No, no. If 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 my experience with these things is correct, somebody actually walked into that theater, saw it on the wall, walked up to the manager and said, hey, can you put my name on the back of that? And can you call me when it's ready to be taken down? Man. Because that's how those things get sent out. That's really intense. Yeah. Really, really intense. Yeah. Um. So thank you, Mark. We really appreciate you having, uh, having me um, try and play I Want to Be the Guy and then watching somebody play I Want to Be the Guy. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is essentially at least like sixty percent of how it was meant to yeah. to be played. But yeah, good game, definitely redemption. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we do next time, Cole? Next time we are doing a little game called Mario's Early Years Preschool Fun, which uh, uh, starts I think the second or third of our moratoriums. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. It is the uh, us eventually just being able to say, let's stop doing educational games. Yep. So, so yeah, we're gonna talk about that um, and maybe a bunch of other stuff. Probably a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I wish that there was more to talk about <laughs> with Mario, uh, Mario's early days. I but, want I want the moratorium to exclude Mario is missing because that's actually pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, well, not to bait somebody into to necessarily, mm, yeah, you know, suggesting it. Oh, it's already in there. But, it's it's in the system. It? Don't okay. worry. But um. Yeah. So, and other in between this week and, and when we were, do that, you guys can uh, support us on Patreon if you want to also have a chance to pick out a game um, that mm-hmm. will send us on tangents. Um, <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash DuckFeed TV. Um, you can also, uh, you know, support us on iTunes. Ratings and reviews are helpful, and telling mm-hmm. friends is also helpful. Yeah. We have a presence on Facebook that is Facebook.com slash Abject Suffering. Mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, until next time, let's get busy. Who is Zoodog? Who is Zoodog? <laughs>